Hey everyone, hello and welcome to this easy step-by-step -step tutorial. My name is OJ and you're watching CryptoCoin tutorial for the latest Trezor device Model T. Trezor is the world's first hardware wallet. It was launched in 2014 by Satoshi Labs and it offers a combination of secure offline cold storage as well as the ability to spend tokens with a similar convenience as a hot wallet. There are two models currently on the market, the older one, Trezor 1, and the newer Model T, which is the one that I'm reviewing here. It has a touchscreen functionality. It's an upgrade from the older Model 1. It also incorporates instant coin swap function with the help of third-party services like Shapeshift and Changely, both of which I have already reviewed in my previous videos and also on my blog. In the past, Trezor was criticized for the small selection of coins that it was supporting, but the year is 2019 and now they, the latest firmware so of both devices supports over a thousand cryptocurrencies, so make sure that you go to their website and you check the latest list of cryptocurrencies that they support. So this is my complete step-by-step -step tutorial, as I said, from start to finish, I will be showing you how to get it set up, the key features, and also I'll show you how to wipe out the device, and should you need to do that, and also how to restore it uh, from an older device in case you've lost or you got an older device damaged or you're just upgrading to the newer device. So if that's what you need to do, just skip towards the end of the video where I'm showing you the restore function. But first, let's see what's in the box. Well. This is the device itself, it is slightly larger than the older model, still very small and it has a hologram sticker which, this is very important, should not be broken, torn or tampered with in any way. Then we also have the USB cable and then we see another piece with the same shape and a sticker on the back. This is uh, to be used for hiding. So. If you want to place the device in somewhere in the, in the inside of a drawer or the wardrobe somewhere where it's not really easy to find, you can stick that piece and then you can, with the magnetic uh, function, you can just uh, have your, your device hidden there. And also we see a few little papers, pieces of paper. Um, these are the ones where you'll be writing the string of words. It's a mnemonic phrase or a seed phrase, 12 words that you will be writing. This is what's protecting your device. This is very important. And do not save this digitally. Do not save it in your um, computer or in a USB or anything like that, because this is uh, the easiest way to get hacked and, and you know, get uh, your de sensitive data leaked. So um, make sure that you write it down. You have two of these pieces of paper in case you make a mistake or in case you have to wipe out the device and you set it up as a new device later on. So um, this is why you provide it with two of them. And you also have a, another piece of paper with the getting started. Um, instructions but this is what I'm here to help you with so um, let's get started without further ado let's uh, look into how to get it set up And before I begin, the first thing I'm going to do is go to the official website trezor.io slash start. So this is the page that will be navigating me for the setup of my device. This is the device here, Trezor Model T, and this is the one I'm going to select. And here is another warning about the seal here of the device that needs to be completely intact. Let's continue to hold it. And I'm going to click here, I understand. This is just a warning to tell me that I'm going to be using the beta version of that wallet. So now I will need to connect my device. So I'm going to undo this seal here. And this part of the cable goes in here. As we connect it, you have to make sure that you hear a click. That way it's connected. And I'm prompted to install the firmware of that device. Let's go there. Okay, so it has rebooted. Now let's go to check for devices again. So now I'm going to reconnect it.
and I'm going to check for devices again. Let's select it and connect. And uh, now I have that choice of recovering a wallet. This is what I was talking about earlier, where if you have lost your wallet and you just bought a new device, you can recover your old device with it. And that will be asking for the mnemonic phrase that is given to you in the very beginning. Because this is the first time I'm setting it up and it's the first device, I will be creating a new wallet. So now I will be given that uh, very important mnemonic phrase. Now let's see what do I have here. I need to select yes and it's touch screen so I'm just using the screen directly which is very good for this device. It's uh, That's the difference between the older and the new version is that here everything is on the screen rather than on my computer. All of these commands. Now this is what I'm getting here. This is the screen. I can see that I need to back it up which will be here from this orange button and if I go down you will see that there is no transactions yet uh, if I want to find my wallet I will click on receive but first let's go through the backup that's the first thing that you need to do before we go into the different functions now this is the warning here that the recovery seed or the mnemonic phrase, as I said, is the actual backup key to all of your cryptocurrency wallets in this device because there are more than one. It's not just Bitcoin, it can store a few different coins. And these are going to be updated every now and then, so make sure that you go to their website and you see which are the different coins that it stores currently. And here is a list of things that you need to be aware of. You should not be taking a picture of the recovery seed. Uh, do not write it into your computer, so don't store it into a file in your computer. Do not save it in cloud storage like Dropbox, Google Drive or uh, iCloud, whatever, you know. Never store sensitive data into cloud storage and do not upload it on the internet in any way. This is why I'm saying that the best thing to do is to use that recovery seed page piece of paper and just write down here your recovery seat all of the words manually write it down on the piece of paper i click understand i check here and i click continue now i will confirm it here on the device as well and now i have the mnemonic phrase displayed if I scroll down, I can see the other, the rest of the words. I need to scroll again and I'm getting to 12. So 12 words is the mnemonic phrase or the seed phrase of this device. Okay, so I will hold this to confirm. I have already written it down. And now it's going to ask me for a few of those words to confirm them so that it makes sure that I've written it down. So now I need to type in the second word from the phrase, which is ordinary. It's recognizing it and I'm just confirming that this is it. Eighth word is when. Let's go to when. And now I need to set my pin. So this is the next step. I can continue right now. I'm not going to do later. So now I'm prompted to select a name for the device. And let's continue and I'm setting it here on my computer. Let's confirm. I'm not sure if it was a wonderful name, but in any case, that's what I selected for this tutorial. Now I'll be selecting a pin. Let's enter a new pin and for this tutorial I will enter 1, 2, 3, 4 
and I will re-enter every time you can see that it scrambles them so that they're not in the same order in case if anyone is looking at you and trying to guess what numbers you're uh, pushing one two three four of course it should not be such an easy pin I'm only doing it because this is a tutorial um, I will wipe this device of course after that and I will set it up as a new device with a different mnemonic phrase and this pin and, and this mnemonic phrase is only going to be used for this tutorial and not after that also there is a warning message here that you should bookmark this page so that you don't have to look for it every time when you do google search often there would be advertising links popping at the top of the search and sometimes this could be phishing attacks could be websites that have replicated completely the original website of Trezor and um, it could be malicious websites that will take your login details and other private data so you can just click on Control D and you will bookmark this page or you know depending on what browser you're using you can click here on the star and it will also bookmark it and then you can select what folder to bookmark it in to save it in let's continue and uh, now because i'm going to be setting my, my device again i'm not going to go here for this option but you should complete it if you type in your email address then it will associate this device with your email address or if the purpose is to you know have more privacy then you don't have to do that I will skip this step and I'm going to click on continue. Let's click finish. And um, this is it. So now what I need to do here is the first thing would be to grab my Bitcoin wallet. And if I go here, I can see the different wallets that currently are being supported by Trezor. We have Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin Gold and Dash, Digibyte, Dodge, of course, Litecoin, Namecoin. These are all derivatives of Bitcoin. They're forked from Bitcoin. That's why they are easy to be set on this device. Um, Zcash as well, Ethereum and Ethereum Classic. I'm expecting that there will be more Ethereum tokens supported very soon. Name, Stellar and Cardano. These are currently and Veritcoin. These are all of the coins that are currently supported. That list will be growing. It was only four coins in the beginning. It was only two coins in the you know early days. So um, yeah, this list is growing. Make sure that you check it here. Now let's go to my Bitcoin wallet and. I will click receive this way I will be able to see what is my wallet address so let's see the full address and I can also check it here on the device make sure that it's identical compare it letter by letter and if it is I will click here OK and I will go here and I will copy with Control C I will copy this address I can also have this picture sent to someone who might want to scan it. If someone needs to send you money or if you're sending yourself money from another wallet, you can use the QR code to scan it or you can just copy and paste this. If you need to send only once you have already received, you will be able to go here to send. You will enter the address here, the amount that you want to send and you can enter it in bitcoin or you can enter it in us dollars let's say you want to send a hundred dollars then it will tell you what is the bitcoin amount that you need to send and you can choose your fee because with bitcoin you pay fees if you want the transaction to be super fast then you will go for a higher fee however most of the time this is not necessary you can use the normal or economy and uh, you can even use the low fee which currently is not really different from economy that will mean that it might take an hour or two or maybe a few hours for the transaction but if it's not an urgent one then you can use that option then you will go to send and that will be it you can also add recipients if you want you can you know bookmark people that you're often sending money to or if it's you know companies that you're sending money to if we go to wallet settings 
then you will see that we can select here what will be the native currency whether it will be usd or any of the other currencies if your local currency is euro or maybe it is canadian dollars you want to change it this is what you will do here um, from here you can select the wallet that you are doing these settings for let's say i want to go to bitcoin cash and um, here this is the server i can explore a transaction if there is a transaction and i have the hash id of that transaction i can paste it here and i can go and find out more about the transaction that's only once i've already done the transaction okay exchange this is another new feature you can you have to be compliant with the exchange service because it is provided by a third party which is shapeshift and in order to exchange between coins you will need to be registered with them so i'm not going to be using that function right now but basically the exchange feature is if you want to be exchanging between different coins directly direct swaps if you want to use your credit card you can buy but of course you also have to be verified and you have to complete the kyc procedures which is basically verifying your id and your address so now i want to wipe out this device because i've already revealed the pin and the seed phrase and everything and um, this is what i'm going to do i'm going to i'm selecting the device here and i go to advanced so I'm in the settings currently. In the advanced settings at the bottom, you will see here that button wipe device. Let's go here. And I need to confirm on the actual device. I need to hold it. And now it's confirmed. Wipe is completed and the device is as new. So now let's disconnect it. And I'm going to connect it again. Okay, and now I'm going to go check for devices. And basically I'm starting the process from the beginning, setting it up as a new device. I have the choice whether to recover it from the previous uh, wallet with the recovery phrase. Let's first just see that option in case you need to do that, what you need to do. Recover your wallet, it's asking you for the phrase right now. Let's go to continue. Do I really want to recover? The phrase that I had was with 12 words. And now I will have to type them here. The first word was side. And the second was ordinary. ordinary and what is the third is indoor then i will type the fifth and so on and so on and then it will just recover the device it will show me everything that i already had in there however that's not what i want to do so let me just turn it off completely and plugging it in, starting from scratch. Let's find this device, connect. And now I will be creating a new device. I will confirm here, and now I'm going to start fresh. I'm going to set it up as a completely new device with a new seed phrase, and everything will be as new. As we can see, I'm getting the same message, your Trezor is not backed up. So now I need to go here and I need to create my backup phrase, my mnemonic phrase. This is where I'm going to end this tutorial because we've already covered that and hopefully everything is quite clear. You know the functions, send and receive, that's pretty much all you need to do. 
and you know that it's very important to remember to write down your mnemonic phrase on a piece of paper, ideally on the one provided here. You have two of these, by the way, in case you make a mistake or if you are setting the device, wiping it out at some point and you're setting it as a new device, then you can use the second recovery seat piece of paper. Okay, well, this is it. This is my tutorial, my easy step-by-step -step tutorial. I hope it was easy for you. I didn't really go into too many details um, because I wanted to keep it simple. I know that it's a little bit intimidating at first when, if this is the first time that you're going to be using a hardware wallet and you need to do all of these setups. It was certainly difficult for me in the beginning. This is why I started doing these tutorials. I also have tutorials on the Ledger Nano S and, uh, and Keep Key. Very soon I will be doing a tutorial on the Ledger Nano X, which is the latest device from Ledger. These are very, very secure and very trusted, very popular hardware wallets alongside Trezor. So if you are thinking of uh, using these wallets, you can also check out these videos that I've done previously. And um, make sure that you do not, uh, as I said, I want to point it out again, make sure that you do not save any of your sensitive data on your computer or um, online in any way. So for instance, your seed phrase, some people are tempted to just uh, open a notepad document or Word document or something and, and write it down there. Uh, Trust me, if hackers get uh, into your computer, get hold of your uh, system, the first thing they would do is go through your um, Word files or any kind of uh, Word documents. So um, make sure that you don't really save things like that on your computer. It is the safest way to write it down on a piece of paper. Some people actually even engrave these uh, seed phrases onto metal plates and they save them in vaults, in you know, in bank vaults and stuff like that. I'm not saying that you have to go to the extremes of that, but certainly it needs to be saved somewhere um, in a well hidden place and make sure that it's not next to your device because you will be hiding your device but you don't want to be hiding your seed phrase with the device because if god forbid someone finds it then they will have access to your device and the seed phrase and even though they may not know your pass um, passcode you know your, your pin number with your seed phrase they can do everything they want because they can just uh, wipe out the device and restore it with the seed phrase and upon that restore as you saw it will ask you to set up a new pin. So just because they don't know your pin does not mean that it's safe. As long as they don't know your seed phrase though, that, that is much safer. So the seed phrase and the pin, these are the two things that are protecting the device. So make sure that these two things are well hidden and they're not sitting together. So this is my advice. I hope this is helping. I hope this video is going to help you as well. And um, and thank you for staying until the end. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that yet. Click on the notification bell icon so that you get notified next time I'm posting. And see you next time.